Get ready to learn 90% of the aerodynamics you're going to need in under 6 minutes. The first big idea is classifying your flow as either laminar or turbulent. And these two classifications can basically be thought of as the yin and yang of airflow. Laminar flow is usually associated with viscosity, while turbulent flow is usually associated with momentum. And when you think of viscosity, you probably think of syrup or motor oil. And that's exactly right. It's basically just fluid friction. Momentum, on the other hand, is based on velocity. And higher velocity flow is going to have higher momentum. A great way you can picture this is, imagine kindergartners at a playground, and how disorderly they're all running around. Now imagine those same kids with syrup up to their ankles. They would not be as disorderly as they were before. And that's basically the idea behind viscosity. Higher momentum flow is going to be a lot less orderly than higher viscosity flow. In aerodynamics, there's an equation called the Reynolds equation, which tells you the ratio of these momentum forces to the viscous forces. And essentially, this is just going to tell you how disorderly your flow is. So next time, instead of telling your kids or your siblings to take a chill pill, you can tell them that their Reynolds number is too high. The second big idea is that engines aren't bad or good, they're just optimized differently. Right now, I'm going to tell you how the next time you're in your pool, you can make a jet engine. The word jet comes from the word jettison, and as we know from Newton's third law, if we throw something forward, it's going to exert an equal and opposite force on us backwards. And as we know from Newton's second law, this force is going to be proportional to the mass and the acceleration. So we can either get thrust through a big mass, or through a giant velocity change. This would be like throwing a basketball versus a baseball in your pool. You're not going to be able to throw the basketball as fast as the baseball, but you'll still see yourself move back almost as far. In terms of aircraft, engines that move a lot of mass are usually more efficient because they don't have to spend as much energy changing the velocity. And engines that accelerate a small amount of mass to high velocities are much more powerful because they can burn most of the incoming air. The third big idea is that supersonic behavior is much stranger than subsonic behavior. You may know what causes a shockwave already, but here's some things you may not know. We all know the trick where you put your finger on a hose and spray your little brother. And this works because the velocity of the water is increased after you decrease the area with your thumb. But if that water was already moving at supersonic speed, you would actually decrease the speed by putting your thumb over it. Increasing the heat of flow actually slows it down when you're going supersonic. And increasing friction speeds up the flow. Now this may seem counterintuitive, but the reason is that information propagates at the speed of sound. And so if your information is propagating more slowly than your air is moving, it's going to slow the flow down. When talking about stability, you need to talk about either dynamic or static stability. And stability is basically just the response of the aircraft after any sort of disturbance. The initial tendency is going to be called a static response, and the tendency over time is going to be called a dynamic response. And I'm going to illustrate this with a meme. In this meme, the girl is statically unstable, but dynamically stable, while a guy is statically stable and dynamically unstable. I'll let you decide which is better for relationships, but for aerodynamics, it's not good or bad, it's just optimized. For example, F-16s are dynamically unstable, which makes them more maneuverable, while most airliners are statically stable. In general, you always want to be dynamically stable. The most important idea I've learned in aerodynamics is that air will always move from high to low pressure. I always think of the air molecules as stupid people in traffic. They only care about going to the lane with the least amount of people. This is the same thing that air molecules do. Consider when you drink out of a straw. You don't actually suck the liquid out of the straw. You suck the air out, and the low pressure moves the liquid because the liquid is a fluid and it wants to go to the lowest pressure. So if you're watching the Weather Channel and you see a low pressure system above your house, that is not good because it means that the air is going to rapidly move towards your house. This is where a lot of hurricanes are formed. Just a quick recap on what we've gone over this whole time. Turbulent flow is high momentum flow, and laminar flow is high viscosity flow. Engines are not better or worse, they're just optimized differently. Supersonic flow is often the reverse of our intuition. There's a big difference between static and dynamic stability. And most important of all, air will always move from high to low pressure.